Yo, Facebook Live zero one. We are Facebook Live episode thirty-one. Sixty-one. Sixty-one. Take go. Are AJ. We rolling? All right. Let's make sure everybody can see us and hear us. There's two of us here today. We have zero on so far. Well, you don't have to tell the numbers when they're <laughs> that low. We got two. All right, good. But can you please say that you can see me and hear me? One is Charles and one is Eden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. We just do this for our family. We got Ma Monique is on. You know, it's good to know, though, because sometimes we're on the wrong page. I've done this oh, wow. where I've been on the wrong page. Okay, we're ready to go. Angie right. Ramsey's ready. Right. All right, here we go. So welcome, everybody, to episode 61 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, along with my partner, John Pierre, who runs the online program with me. So this is where you get to ask your questions about healthy, permanent, and sustainable weight loss, and the best way to ask a question is through the website www.eatunprocessed.com and we want to thank all of you who signed up early for our live ultimate weight loss conference in Vegas Labor Day weekend Friday August 31st September 1st and 2nd not only with keynote speaker Dr. Neil Barnard with myself John Pierre Dr. Goldhammer Dr. Lyle and we just added a new speaker Dr. Roseanne Alviera from UC yes. Davis Integrative School of Medicine. Fantastic. She's brilliant, she's gorgeous. And we also added Sharon McRae, PCRM cooking instructor and health coach. I'm gonna do a special session, can't speak, on how to transition families and children to a healthier diet when JP does his men's group. So, Julianne's question is about Vegas. She says, are we going to rock Vegas? Yes, we are. We're having a carnival. It's gonna be the most amazing event. If you wanna sign up, and save $250 and get the meet and greet for free. You need to do it by 11.59 p.m. tonight. Otherwise, the price will go up, but you're still welcome to come. It's at the Tuscany, and it's an amazing event. So I just got back from Florida, where I was given this wonderful gift. Now, some of you people in the cold weather might be thinking this is a scarf. Yeah, I thought so. Well, it's actually not. It's the coolest gift for a chef. It's called a kitchen boa. They can't see that the far down. Oh, okay, well, I don't know what to do. There we go. Lift it up. So what it is, basically, is this part is towel. So when we're doing chef stuff, we want to wipe our hands. It's, but see, you gotta kinda go, make the camera go down, Kenny, and I'll tell you why. Because the thing is, is you don't wipe your hands up here. When we're doing chef stuff, we just like, oh my God, where's a towel? It's just absolutely the perfect location. And this one says, talk foodie to me. It was gifted to me by PCRM cooking instructor and chip facilitator, Kathy Reynard, who I met on the cruise. She looks just like Debbie Reynolds. And thank you so much for hosting me. And thanks to all the volunteers of the Veg Fest in Florida. I mean, volunteers really are the backbone of the plant-based mm -hmm. movement. I always did volunteer work because when I graduated Cal State Northridge in 1995, our keynote speaker was the deaf actress Marley Matlin, right. and she said that now that we're going out in the world, the onus on us is that we need to do volunteer work, and, and I, I always have. But you reframed it by saying that everybody should do it, and it's the rent we pay for the privilege of living on Earth. So that was yeah, really cool what you said. And, and the, these veg fests are run by volunteers, and they just, I mean, there would be no veg fest without yeah. volunteers. There'd probably be no plant-based movement nothing, without volunteers. So thanks, thanks to all of you who do volunteer what you do, even if you're not volunteering at VegFest, and especially those that do animal rescue. Man, those are the really the people I admire, how, how they do that. So thank you for those of you that do volunteer work. We have Kathy Cardwell here from, she just saw you oh, in Oh, how Fort nice. Well, Myers. thank you. Yeah, I, you know, I was giving my talk, and I, first of all, I've never done a PowerPoint outside. It was a little weird oh, wow. doing a PowerPoint. It's raining outside. and stuff it with an umbrella. started raining, so oh. I had to use an umbrella, so that was really cool. Well, this is so perfect because Janet, who's a member of UWL, submitted two questions, and, and I swear, we don't make these up, but it's just, it's like, like synchronicity because her question is actually in line with the recipe and thank you so much for your email saying you like when we do a recipe we'll always do a recipe as long as there's somebody behind the camera like Kenny or Eden we're gonna do it in the living room today because this recipe is so easy you can do it in your hotel room and JP yeah. is actually gonna be the chef today but Janet's question listen to this, this is perfect I would like to make my own hummus since it's almost impossible to find a store-bought one without added oil I think that's true I think sometimes you can find one with, with tahini, but it's really hard to find one without even tahini mm -hmm. or sesame seeds. And I certainly have never seen one without salt. Have you, Kenny? Uh, they have one at Whole Foods just last week. I bought it. Really? But didn't they it have salt? It had tahini. It didn't have yeah, salt. Yeah, but it had tahini, and that's a little bit kind of high in yeah. fat for our people. Yeah. But that's good that it didn't have salt. And for you, the tahini's fine, Kenny. She says, do you have any recipes for simple and tasty hummus without oil and possibly tahini? It would make eating raw veggies so much easier on my end. Janet... Well, have we got the episode for you? And the answer is there's a wonderful 
a hummus recipe in my book on processed. You can easily omit the tahini, but JP is going to show you how to make hummus right now without yes. oil, without salt, without tahini. And I was planning on doing it. And he was planning on doing it anyway, so thank you. Yes, so I'm going to bring over this little cooking thing here. There we go. See, he's much more than a fitness guy. He is also a chef. Right, they just don't know that. Right. Well, JP actually has a cooking DVD. Mm -hmm. Long before we met, he did with Dr. Carrie Saunders, and it's yep. called The Bachelor and the Homemaker. Yep. All right. Okay, so the what bachelor? we're doing. Yes, I'm the bachelor. So this is a salsa maker. Or it's called a Power Chef Pro, because right. it can also make sorbet. That's true. It, it can, can make also mayonnaise. make, yeah. We use it, I generally use it to make salsa, but I use it to make this hummus. So basically what I do is I take, could you hold this, AJ? Or I'll let you pour no, this okay. in. Absolutely. So what we have is one can of garbanzo beans. Now what I like to get is the organic garbanzo yeah, right. beans. These are organic yeah. and salt free. Salt free. If and you get the salted ones, just rinse them out. That's okay. And if uh, if they wanted to use beans, they cook themselves in their instant pot. They need one and a half cups of beans because that's about how many uh, cups of beans in, one, in, can. in one can. Yeah. And you told me it didn't matter if these were chickpeas. You said no. you could do this with uh, cannellini beans yep. or. Oh, I do with all of sorts of different beans. The garbanzo beans are the ones you're used to because right, you're used to that hummus, hummus uh, texture and flavor. But now, you don't have to add the water in that's in the can. So what we've done is we've taken that out, but we leave it on the side in case we want to add more water. Yeah. So this is the this is actually the liquid. Right, because why not? It's got more flavor. Yeah, than so we add some. We just definitely. a little. Yep. We can always add more. We can, that's why we right. don't want to throw it out. Okay, then traditionally, let's see, do you have my spoon there? I sure do. Now, so we all we have in here is the garbanzo beans and the liquid so far. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add some garlic. So one clove of garlic we're going to add. Now, if you want, you can chop it up ahead of time. That's fine. Now, what I do is I add something a little different. I add either carrot or beet. And this is just about, this looks like about a quarter cup. Mm -hmm. I always have chopped carrots already ready in my fridge yep. because Bailey loves them. And by the way, you can chop carrots that finely just in, using in this here. machine. Yep. So usually it's going to be to add a little bit of sweetness in there because remember, we're not using any fat in this recipe. So, and it also adds a little color. The beet really makes it a little red. Oh, the beet's And pretty. this makes it orange, okay? And then we can put a splash of um, lemon in here. Now, normally... This you, is organic. If you don't have the lemon, uh, it, you know, whole lemon, then this is fine. Not enough? Mm -hmm. okay. And I prefer to use the fresh lemon because I actually like to, to scrape out inside those bioflavonoids. That white part, that's for strengthening your, your capillaries, keep your capillaries strong. Then all we do is we just put on this top, which is pretty amazing. You could use the zest. I'll mm -hmm. hold it. Okay. Now you don't have this cool machine that works well in the blend tech and the Vitamix it, it and the works. blender. That, so this is like if you want to travel. But this with is like, it. what if there's an, a power outage? Mm -hmm. You know, like when we had all the hurricanes yeah, and absolutely. fires. I mean, these are great. So all we do is then we're just going to start pulling it. And you know that I like manual machines. So I really like these manual machines. So you're working out while you're doing it. Now, oh, yeah. Will you change arms while you're doing it? Uh, well, no, because we don't need that. Not that many pulls. I mean, technically. And you can buy this on your site too? This is through. No, this is, gave my it to friend me. Kurt, oh. who does Aunt Cassie, buys these. So if you want to get the link, I'll, I'll I'll get Kurt online and hook you up. I'm not doing any more so, Tupperware parties. We just had too much stuff for donation. Gotcha. Look now, at this. Normally, I like it. I don't like it to be super creamy. I like it to have little chunks in there, mm -hmm. so it forces you to chew it a little bit. And then basically you'll see it. Mm, it smells good. Oh, it's, it tastes great. But you'll see it's a little bit on the chunky side. No, just keep pulling it or blending. We it can longer. make it smoother if we sure, want. You can make it smoother. Now, here's the mm. secret. I'll show you the next secret. So, AJ, if you can hold this, mm -hmm. what I do is I get into my travel bag. I'll bring it over. And by the way, you can travel with this, but make sure you take the blade out and put that in your suitcase. You yeah. will not be able to get a blade oh, through, no, TSA. Not through TSA. So, I take my travel bag, and I have a couple secret ingredients I like to add. One, most people don't ever do is mushrooms. Mm. So this is a um, um, super shrooms, which is like, I think it's 20 different organic mushrooms. And that's on my site, it's from Boku. So if you go to livingwithharmony.org and you click on shop resident recommendations, it's there. And then the other thing I add in is turmeric. So is I add the turmeric or turmeric? Well, whatever you want to say. Wow, now beautiful. what I do is when I travel too, you can just take the turmeric or turmeric and put it in your own little shaker and then you can shake it in. Anytime you add the turmeric or the turmeric in there, always add a little bit of black pepper. That's going to absorb, it's going to help you absorb some of the active constituents in there. And what JP also does that's brilliant is hum the hummus this thick would 
probably get through TSA, but they always have the right to confiscate oh, yes. foods they think are too liquidy. So what JP does is when he's traveling, he makes his hummus, puts it in a food dehydrator, yep. dehydrates it, blends it in a blender, and when he gets to his location, all he has to do is add water. And you don't even have to add hot water, just any yeah, water just any water. Yep, and that's it, and then just mix it up really well, and your hummus is ready well, to go. very good. So yeah. there we go. Thanks for the question, Janet. Yes. And the next question from Janet is on vegetables. Now, I'm going to take this beautiful kitchen boa off because I want to show you my new nice. shirt. Did you get that made yourself? I had it made because people are complaining still about how hard it is to eat vegetables. So I just say, grow up and eat your damn vegetables. Hey, maybe I should get one for you too that says, grow up and do your weight training. Ah, yes. Yes. Very nice. Ah, that'd be a good one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> You're so funny. So Janice says, Janet says, what do you use to wash your vegetables? This seems like a silly question, but I've been using the spray bottle from Trader Joe's. My friend says she makes her own hydrogen peroxide wash. Any thoughts? Well, are they organic vegetables or regular vegetables? Um, she didn't say. Why don't you answer it as if it was it, both? Okay, well, that's, that's one thing you can do. You can also use essential oils. So one of the most potent essential oils in the world is going to be thyme. Mm -hmm. And another one that's just as equally as good is oil of oregano. So if you put a couple of drops of that in a spray bottle and then you spray it, it's antibacterial, mm -hmm. antiviral. And the coolest thing is there's a little bit of trace of that scent on the vegetable. Mm, okay? But of course clever. you can still continue what she's doing is fine. Right. Uh, many people do buy vegetables that are already pre-washed. That's what I do because I'm buy. really lazy. Yeah, Yeah, well, you can do that. Or I generally just will, I mean, if I'm in a hurry, just, just kind of wash it under the, their organic. I just kind of soak it in the water and yeah. then just mm -hmm. come back. I don't I'm really mainly just trying to make sure there's no little bugs in there that I need to rescue to get mm -hmm. out. But basically if dirt, I'm not that worried about dirt as much as I would be, obviously, if somebody had pesticides, mm -hmm. if it was not organic. Just try to do your best to avoid, from, a, from an environmental standpoint, avoid buying all the plastic containers. If you can buy in a bag, it's a lot easier to recycle bags than it is those hard plastic yeah, containers. Yeah, so if you shop at farmer's markets. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. I just bring my bag. Same thing with uh, like Whole Foods. If you bring your bag, you can fill it up with lettuce and then they just weigh it. Mm -hmm. And you don't have any bags. And then when you're home, you can keep it in your veggie dome. Yeah. I should go get oh, mine I love and show it. Yeah, I, I saw Duncan at the book signing for Victoria Moran and JL Fields last yeah. week and I said, you need to make a Chef AJ size, you yeah. know? Somebody asked a question. I'm not sure if you just said this, but how do you keep your noodles from sticking together? My noodles? Well, I don't eat noodles, so it yeah. never sticks. I don't eat any Wait, flour but does she mean? Is she, she's not UWL person? Maybe she means... Love your show. Is, is she talking about like spaghetti or pasta? I don't know. We don't eat pasta or flour products in UWL, but in the regular world, the way they keep pasta and noodles from sticking yeah. together is oil. Oil, yeah. Which we don't recommend. Mm -hmm. But you can make your fettuccine pasta with your oh, zucchini. Oh, zucchini. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah, so. That wouldn't stick. But that is yeah. what they do in restaurants yeah. where I worked or other places. Is but don't do they it. They put a ton of oil in the water and that ostensibly Bad. makes the pasta and noodles not yeah. stick. But think about it. If the noodles are sticking together, imagine how it's sticking in your colon. So we don't recommend I don't recommend pasta, at least not for people that have food addictions or are overweight. So Myra says, I'm wondering if I need to take any supplements for B12, omegas, anything else. Thanks. Well, of course, we always recommend B12. Everybody, everybody that 100%. is a non-negotiable, yeah. even, you know, even for people that aren't following the plant-based diet. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially people who get over 50, for sure. Mm -hmm. JP, uh, Michelle was saying, you wash your vegetables with uh, oregano and thyme? Oil. Well, you, what essential, you, oil. Essential oil. essential oils. Oh, essential oils, gotcha. You can put it, uh, a couple drops in water, uh, you know, a spray bottle, shake it up and then spray it because it's antibacterial, antiviral. Yeah. But generally, um, you know, I think just washing them in water is good, but it, somebody was asking about what sort of cleaning detergent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do they, they use. This is an alternative. Gotcha. Okay. I try not to buy anything at all in plastic, mm -hmm. so I don't buy the plastic tubs of lettuce, and I also don't buy, like, the spray bottle to spray stuff, mm -hmm. so I make my own. Mm -hmm. Very good. Do, do you think hydrogen peroxide uh, works? Hydrogen peroxide works too, yeah. sure. Works for teeth whitening, I'm mm -hmm. told, too. Yeah. So B12, there's uh, the methylcobalamin and the cyanocobalamin. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. There's, okay. yeah, there's, 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 much of, there's hydroxycobalamin, right. which has a whole other effect. I would say don't worry about the source right now because mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like arguing should you have four nuts or three and a half nuts. It's kind of silly. None. Yeah, okay. But, well, so, so, so here's the thing. I mean, you can get tested your MMA levels and mm -hmm. your B12 levels. every most Not most people, but a lot of people go to their doctor once a year for blood tests or just for a physical or just to say, hey, and that's a test that can easily be done. We have to request it because your physician's going to run a serum B12, which mm -hmm. is totally different. Right, but you want that. Either way, you should be taking a B12. Right, supplement. everybody needs to take B12. And the DHA and iodine, there's all these other supplements you could take. Those really have to do kind of, in, in somewhat, we do consults because we're trying to figure mm -hmm. out what you need. But as I've said before, and when I've done it on the UWL boards, there was somewhat of a little debate uh, when I mentioned that you should, where is everyone getting their iodine from? 
I mean, Dr. Clapper has done a lot of different podcasts talking about the soil being depleted of trace minerals, and iodine is one of those. Mm -hmm. So I recommend sea vegetables. So, if you're, especially if you're not eating zero salt like some of us oh, are. Well, right. And vitamin D is one of those things that I think, again, you would get tested in the blood, especially if you're living someplace where you don't get a lot of sunshine. Uh, Mine's always been normal well, because yeah, but I'm outside. In the sun. But, 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 but the yeah. truth that matters, think about it, where else are you getting your vitamin D? Nowhere. Yeah, because you're, you're not just... drinking fortified milk. Because right. remember, it's fortified with synthetic mm -hmm. vitamin D. So you're not getting it that way. So if you're not taking a supplement, you're, your only good source is the sun, unless you're eating irradiated mushrooms, which can form it. So, so like the that. question is, how much turmeric a day? Well, I mean, it all depends on what you're trying to attain. But um, you know, normally with my clients, I, have, I recommend a pinch with all their meals and then a little shake of pepper. Mm -hmm. So it gets to be about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon per day. And but it's a very powerful um, you know, anti-inflammatory agent. Now the one that I use is the timeless turmeric, and that's on my site. It's, it, it's so bright orange, I mean, you almost need sunglasses for it. And people at UWL have said they've just used a pinch and it's, a pinch and it's very powerful. Wow. Any, I, you can use anything, but the truth is, you'll look at some of these turmerics and they're, they're pale because mm -hmm. they cut them with talc and different mm. clays. Right, going back to the vitamin B12, Doris says, True North says, methyl is, uh, is, better? is well, not cyano for the B B12 because they have cyanide in it. Yeah, I know, but that's, Dr. Clapper recommends the methicobolamine. Dr. Greger recommends cyanocobolamine. Other people recommend hydroxy. I think it's, I do. It's I, I buy the brand at True North called Pure, and I believe that's yeah, methyl. Well, I, I don't think it's worth worrying about. Yeah, no, not worth arguing no. about. That's not, no, not worth splitting hairs okay. about. No. Uh, what do you say to people that are uh, they're generally not vegan people that say, well, if the plant-based diet was natural, we wouldn't have to supplement with B12 because we can get that from you. I'd say they're right. Well, no, I'd say they're right. You don't need to supplement if you live in dirty conditions. Mm -hmm. So if you don't wash your hands and there's you know dirt everywhere and you're drinking well water and you know eating carrots out of the earth, it's a microorganism that's in the soil. Right, you so go explain to, Indo to people where B12 is from. It's not it, from the animal. Well, no, it, the animal gets it because it's eating clumps right. of dirt all day long. Yep. Just like if you go to Indonesia and you go to their farmer's markets where they're cooking tempeh, there's so much bacteria on that tempeh, it's loaded with B12. Wow. You go eat our tempeh that's sterilized, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So that's not a good argument. It's And again, we're not really here to argue. If somebody right. doesn't want to take B12, then don't. But, but there could be consequences. Well, not there could be. There pretty there much will be. Will be. It's but permanent it neurological be. damage. That, so, yeah. Michelle asked, can you have too much turmeric? Well, uh, yeah, you gotta be careful too with any spices like that that can act as blood thinners. But I, I, the real question is, why would you be using that much turmeric? It's like, why would you be using that much of anything? Are you trying to get a certain, uh, you know, results with it? You know, are you trying to be on this anti-inflammatory program? If that's the case, I'd look closer at your diet than worrying about just keep adding spices. Cool. But I, you know, I don't know if there's been enough studies done on it to indicate how much is mm -hmm. safe or not. Probably Dr. Greger has probably researched that. Well, I like that. the fresh turmeric grated it's on great. my salad. I love Wonderful. it. It looks a little bit like ginger, but yeah. it's orange. So I think fresh turmeric. Definitely no chalk in that. Really good. Ah. When you well, they said chalk, but chalk. there's no chalk when you grate it yourself. No. Oh, Just yeah, make yeah. sure it's non-irradiated, it's organic. You know, mm -hmm. the one that I get is in, in, from Costa Rica. You'll notice when you look at it, you'll see the different colors. You want one that looks really bright orange. Mm -hmm. Cool. So Gunther has a question that he asked before on one day that I had a co-host named Steve Middleman, episode 55, where he sh we showed you how to make delicious mashed potatoes. She said, I had he said, I had asked you about what you do when it comes to getting a cold or flu. You and Steve gave answers to my questions. However, you stated that the question would have been John Pierre's area. Please ask John Pierre what he would do to prevent a cold or flu or what to do when having one. Someone also asked, have you gotten sick with this flu season? Have you guys been sick? answer that right now because Lily asked last week if I could show this so I've always been the person that got that once a year cold flu always mm -hmm. like you know and I always blame it on the fact that I'm asthmatic and I always get sick at True North every year that I work there Christmas it's so cold well when I got pneumonia on the cruise a couple years ago my pulmonary doctor who's a vegan Dr. Roy Artal at Cedars also a sleep medicine specialist and internist told me to use the neti pot this is this is not a neti pot, but it's exactly like it. It's the Sinus Flush by Neil MD. Very inexpensive. You can get it at any pharmacy. I've even seen it at regular Kroger type grocery stores. I saw it and in you Florida. can travel with it. Saw it in, yeah, saw it in Florida and Publix. And he said to use this every day, not just to use it when I have a cold. And I have been doing it every day, and everybody around me is sick. I have not yet gotten sick. So I'm telling you guys, you know, they say that our sinus passages are so, sort of like the microbiome to our stomach. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And then if we don't clean them, all those bugs are going to get in yeah. there. So this is what I have done to prevent getting sick. If I get sick, I'll let you know. But so far, doing this once a day, it has worked. Just make sure you always use distilled water. Yep. You don't ever want to use tap water in these things. And then also remember the company that I told you about on my site. It's livingwithharmony.org under resident recommendations. It's a pro product called uh, Cold DX, mm -hmm. Aller X, and then Immune uh, X or DX. And the immune formula you would take, you know, throughout the cold and flu season. And then if you were to get a cold, you immediately start taking that cold formula and it works like magic. The other thing is obviously just keeping your immune system Washing strong. Washing your hands. Yeah, keeping your hands washed, keeping your fingers out of your eyes and your nose where you're transferring these bacteria mm -hmm. or viruses to that. Staying away from sick people. Yeah, well, of course. Like I volunteer at a hospital and, I, and when they have outbreaks, I won't go visit the emergency room. I just don't go yeah. or I'll wear a mask. Yeah. Yeah. When they tell me that there's a lot of flu, they, they tell the, well, I'm a volunteer, but they tell the employees and either I just don't go to that patient or I'll wear a mask. Yeah. Yeah. And then also on my site, there's an oil called On Guard, which is really good. It's antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. And that's one that you can actually do a gargle with. You can put a little bit in your palm and breathe it in. Which would, which would get inside your nose and be you know act as uh, you know getting rid of bacteria and viruses, and some people actually use it in they they take it internally. So. And I think eating well is a good thing well, for course. immunity, especially lots of vegetables, especially lots of greens, dark green leafies. The the one food group that is so important and vital to not just weight loss, but obliteration of food cravings and health is the one group that we can't seem to get people yep. to eat enough of. So I say grow up and eat your damn vegetables. That's what I say. So Jen says, just curious about your personal vision board or boards for 2018. If it's too personal to share, no worries, I understand. So We did one for you on the yeah. first day of Ultimate Weight Loss. Yeah, mastery. of Mastery. I actually haven't done one since October, but I did this one on October 1st. Mine nice. was about strength training. I, I want to be fit and not just not just be thin. Okay. I want to actually have muscles. So this is my vision that. board. We're going to go in there. And, Excellent. Uh, and so far, this is the only one I've done. We usually do this on New Year's Eve, but we had a, a talent show instead at, at True North. Wow. So, yeah, this is Gail Godot, I think. Or she's Wonder Woman. I have lots of pictures of her. I wow. love her. So th they're fun to make. You can do this with the kids. Yeah. Oh, you and should. by the way, you know, it, 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 these were all done uh, with images online. I didn't have any magazines. Mm -hmm. So you can totally use magazines. Google Images. Yeah, Google Images. That's, That's exactly how I did it. So yep. And that's a key video. component of all UWL. So if you're not in UWL, that is one of the things we talk about constantly is having a vision board because you want to be surrounding yourself with this image or this goal that you're always trying to attain. And remember, your whole environment is your vision board, which is why if you're living in a household with a bunch of junk, yep. that's your vision sure, board. Sure, you're surrounded by that. You know? and, and, and people just don't realize how strong the research is you know, my, uh, the saying that we say in Ultimate Weight Loss is if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Yeah. That's, that's not just a saying that I say for fun. That is corroborated by research. Processed food addiction is a disease, and it's triggered by cues in the environment. Mm -hmm. And while some people maybe have a clean house, they work in an environment mm -hmm. where that's all they see. You know, it reminds me of that old saying, two men looked out of prison bars. One saw mud, one saw stars. And if all you're looking at is crap food all day, or God forbid, working with it, it you know, like... Our good friend Carrie Saunders says, hang around a barber shop, just a matter of time till you get a haircut. Yeah. So that's why cleaning your environment is critical, critical. So we answered this last week, but that's okay because not everybody watches every episode and certainly not in order. But Summer says, and I think it's important, that's why I'm bringing it back, is my body going to think I'm in starvation mode and store food as fat, even though I'm not eating overt fats? If I don't eat my recommended daily calories, which is 2,200, I often find myself consuming around 1,100 to 1,600 calories a day, and I feel great, but I do what you say, eat when hungry, stop when full. I also work out five to six days a week doing Zumba or strength training. I'm 5'4 and weigh 182. I have heard your hunger drive is lower when you are overweight. I've been following your program at 90% since October and lost 14 pounds. Any advice on this would be helpful. First of all, congratulations on losing 14 pounds. Um, but my advice is to follow the program 100%. Yep. And if you're not a member, then join the program so oh, we yeah. can support you in that next 10%. So we said last week that, 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 that your body doesn't go into starvation mode and store fat if there's not enough calories. If there were, there would be no Holocaust. I mean, there would be no 
anorexia nervosa. Mm -hmm. So you don't, your body doesn't go into starvation mode. That is how you lose weight, by eating less calories. Now, I don't know how you know your recommended data calories is 2,200. Uh, well, there's maybe some, because of the exercise, because that's, that's... Yeah, there's some formula that you can follow online. But, but, but remember, when somebody is supposed to eat 2,200 calories, let's just pretend that's mm -hmm, accurate, mm -hmm. what if those 2,200 calories came from fat and sugar? Well, not very healthy. Well, of course. So that's why you got to be real careful when you start talking about calories. The question is, where do those calories come from? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like 1,600 calories is perfectly reasonable for somebody that's 182 to eat a day. Because if you just go by strictly BMR, basal metabolic rate, the amount of calories you burn at rest just to beat your heart and breathe your lungs, it's about 10 calories per pound of body weight, which means she really only needs about 1,800 calories a day, maybe more if she's exercising that vigorously. But the idea is, is you want slow and sustained weight loss. And by using the principle of calorie density as the fundamental of any program, if, if she lowers her average calorie density to 500 a day, which means 2,200, if, if that's really what she needs to eat, to, to 1,700, or in this case, 1,600, that's perfect. Yeah. I mean, that is totally enough calories. You're like Mr. Math today. Well, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. I've never heard that your hunger drive is lower when you're overweight. Yeah, no. If anything, I, I think it's higher. Yeah. But, I, yeah, I, I've never heard that. So where are you getting this, this uh, research? So please join UWL if you haven't, you know, because then we can support you all day, every day. And, and it's not only us that's supporting her. Oh, yeah. The all thousands the, all of the people, people that are members. Group. Yeah. I mean, by the time somebody asks a question, ten people have oh, already yeah. answered I mean, it. I look at the question. And then all of a sudden the answers start popping up, and I'm like, oh, I don't need to comment now. Somebody yeah. just five people answered. Well, I love it because it gets to the point where it's like what she said. So, exactly. Yeah, we're, we're, Ditto. Yeah. Come to Vegas. And it'd be amazing. So we actually have two questions on blended salads, which oh. is your brainchild, and thank you so much for that because it came to me in a time in my life where I was wearing a brace on my hand and having major dental work. It was it was just such a wonderful thing that I incorporate now, not every day, but at least on the days I spin because they're just I just I crave them. I yep. love them. So two questions on blended salads. The first one is for Debbie. She says I hear people talking about blended salads. I'm not sure what it is. Do you recommend them? And the second from Meredith. If you want to eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, and dinner like a pauper, what are some good pauper meals? Pauper, not popper, is in pan popper, not pauper meals, mm -hmm. pauper meals. Is a blended salad an option? I want to get the most out of my food eaten early, but I want to leave an option open of eating something light. Is just fruit an option or would that spike insulin thoughts? So we'll ask the first question about the blended salad. Do you want to talk about it? Because no, you, you invent it. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to show this as soon as my book comes out, which is very, very soon. And maybe I'll go grab the copy. I got the dummy copy somewhere. Maybe I'll go look at it when you start talking. Uh, so I'm going to show this when we get back in the kitchen, but a blended salad is a smoothie, but it's a vegetable smoothie. It's an all vegetable smoothie with no fruit, unless the fruit is a non-starchy vegetable like a cucumber, tomato, bell pepper, that the kind cucumber. of thing, or cucumber, which I love. Cucumber is my kind of favorite. Core. That's my favorite thing because what I like to do is like to blend some cucumber and then leave some kind of chunky, like you did with your. Hummus. Do you remember what episode that was? It wasn't an episode. We did it for the mastery program. Oh, so we are going to show you a blended salad oh. very soon. <laughs> so basically, it's just a smoothie made out of vegetables, and I don't put any sweet fruit in it. My my typical one is two pounds, so I can eat this two pound salad. And it's going to take me an hour, or I can blend it and I can drink it, and it's fabulous. So I like to have some kind of green. For me, it's usually spinach, organic spinach. Sometimes it's romaine. I do about eight ounces. I do about eight ounces of tomatoes. I do about eight ounces of either zucchini or red bell pepper, whichever I have. But my favorite thing, like JP says, is the cucumber because mm -hmm. it just it's it tastes more like a spacho. And a lot of people think it looks kind of weird and tastes weird. You could put salad dressing in it we well, put barefoot yeah. dressing yeah, in yeah. it or I usually just do two tablespoons of lime juice it's thick it's delicious it's like having soup well, it looks like a green smoothie it looks exactly Most like a green smoothie yeah. they're not gonna know that you're having all vegetables instead of having mango and spinach or kale but they're delicious and it's a great way to get your damn vegetables in mm -hmm. and especially if you're a teacher or somebody that has to Press get to work time. early you don't have time to sit there and eat you know two pounds of cook vegetables or roast them in the morning they, they really are quite terrific and it's really just like having gazpacho soup yep. so thanks for the question Debbie we'll show you in a couple of weeks how to make it so now Meredith's question that that idea of, of you have you heard that idea of breakfast like a king lunch like a I've heard, yeah. sure, I, Davis, I think, right and, and, and a lot of the Adventist doctors promote that and I think it's 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 a it's a good way to be but our society is exactly the opposite wait what do you think is a good way to be that way of eating more of the calories early in the day yeah, I, mean, I don't know if I don't I don't know if we necessarily even need to eat breakfast unless you're right, hungry. Right, but, but but what I'm saying is, it, 
I don't think of breakfast as something that happens at five, six, or seven in the morning. I think of breakfast as break fast, your first oh, okay, meal. Yeah. So for oh, me, I that agree. could be anywhere from 10.30 in the morning on a yeah. spin day to uh, uh, 12 or one on another day. That's but what point. I'm saying is I think that it's better to eat more of your calories yep while you're active. Mm -hmm. Most Americans either skip breakfast, have donut, coffee or something, and then you know don't eat very much for lunch and then have these huge 2,000 calories yes. dinner and then have snacks at night while they're yeah. watching TV. So to answer Meredith's question, first I would say, um, you know what what's a pauper meal I, I don't think it has to be so much like I think it's just your smallest meal I think mm -hmm. any meal can be your pauper meal it doesn't have to be a, it could be a blended salad I think that's great because it operates on my principles if I'm not hungry enough to eat vegetables I'm probably not hungry my fear at least for me JP is if I had a blended salad like that at night I'm gonna be peeing all night mm -hmm. because it's true. just too much water for me mm -hmm. So, also how early are you gonna have it in relation to when you go to bed? My whole thing is three to five hours, last bite of food before laying down. So what do you rec do you think fruit would spike insulin? What what do you mm -hmm. recommend for well, a pop? If you meal? want to have a low glycemic fruit, like a grapefruit mm -hmm. or berries, mm -hmm. that would be fine. You don't yeah. want to spike your insulin, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's a good idea to be eating a lot of fruit for pe most people in this program, mm -hmm. unless they're done exercising. As soon as they're done, that would be the best time. Yeah. But for people in this program, mm, I would keep the berries and grapefruits. Yeah. What about car car oranges, which I just bought today? Oranges okay? Oh, well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, they're too sweet. It, I mean, it depends on their condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What condition do I have? Well, we can't really say that online. <laughs> That's Isn't more for he? a psychiatrist hey, to diagnose. Hey, and uh, he is got. Thank you so much. He's going to be teaching two boot camps at the Ultimate Weight Loss Live Vegas, and we've got a bigger room this time. So yeah, we need room. That and we're time. having Michelle Vakili, oh. yoga teacher from the uh, Jersey area, do yoga classes at night. Jersey so, yoga. Jersey Jersey yoga. You know. All right. So Myra wants to know. Is there something to the time we stop eating if we do intermittent fasting? I generally don't eat my first meal until after lunch, then around four and dinner at that, that till, uh, till after lunch, then lunch around four and dinner at seven to seven thirty. Sometimes I'll have a piece of fruit later, but I'm wondering if I should cut that out. So, I mean, I don't know how strict. I mean, I would I would refer her to the website of. Uh, fasting.org, the True North website. There's a wonderful article written by Dr. Jennifer Morano on intermittent fasting, what it is, why it works. Mm -hmm. and the idea is it's they really believe it's more like intermittent feeding where you're narrowing the feeding window to anywhere from like six to eight to sometimes even 10 hours a day instead of the traditional breakfast, lunch, and dinner where you're eating from seven in the morning till 10 at night. The idea is, is even if your caloric budget is the same by narrowing the window, it's supposed to have health benefits, longevity benefits, weight loss benefits, you know. Yeah, I mean, eating vegetables for breakfast really is not gonna affect your insulin level, mm -hmm. whereas other foods can. Yeah. And you don't need to eat breakfast early if you're not hungry. Yeah. So like I said, I prefer eating, I prefer starting eating at about noon. Mm -hmm. And I prefer to be done by five or six. Yeah, same here. But what works for you and your, a lot of times I can't do that, I know. Because a lot of times I know during the afternoon, I'm gonna be busy with clients mm -hmm. and stuff, so I'll have something with me or I'll take a, a green smoothie or something. I think the big thing is, is not is because there are people that do intermittent fasting. I know an elderly couple, they're in their 80s and they do this, they're actually at Venice and they get up very early, like four in the morning, so they might have their first meal at seven and their last meal at two. Oh wow. You know, so nice. they're doing it, but they, have, yeah. but they go to bed very early. But I, I think the idea is, is to not be eating after dinner. I think yeah. one of the biggest problems I've seen with the participants of the Ultimate Weight Loss program isn't so much what they're eating, but the frequency to which mm -hmm. they're eating, which is sometimes all day. Yeah. And so we want to get used to not eating after whatever we think of as that dinner, yeah. the pauper meal, whatever you want to call it. And, and that's hard for people because if people are eating for emotional reasons, which JP and I had a long discussion about emotional eating, is it real, is it not real? I refer to the lecture I did with Dr. Lyle, he doesn't think it is, but you have every right to think it is. Let me make your own decision on that. Well, either way, the point is that yeah. we're using uh, we're, we're creating meals into recreational sports, mm -hmm. and I think that's where we're going. Well, we're not using problem. food for which it was intended. It's not being used for hunger or survival, and right. it's yeah, the, nourishment. We're supposed to be nourished. Right. We're supposed to. You're supposed. It's supposed to be enjoyable, but right. you're not supposed to be riding that high all day long. Right. And so the thing is, is what happens, and, and I think it's so much better that somebody that's eating, you know, cheeseburgers and and cinnabon would then maybe eat a little bit too much of banana soft serve. I think it's so much oh, better right. when you're eating foods to the left of the red line. 
and if people, that's what they want to do, that's fine. If they don't want to ever deal with the other stuff, I would much rather see people eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and no SOS. But they still haven't really solved the problem of, of what's eating them instead of, of what they're eating. And they're doing much better for their arteries, but they're right. still doing the same behavior. It's sort of like they're taking methadone instead of taking heroin, which, which is better. And, and, and it could be a gateway for them to eventually not do that behavior. But the idea is, is when you're eating after dinner, I mean, unless you really did eat all day, and, and we've noticed there have been a couple of people in mastery, I don't know if you've seen the posts, both these girls are very, very lean, but they said they've been overeating on compliant oh, food right, lately. I right, right. won't mention their names because I don't have their permission, but I, I had a, a little phone call or text chat with both of them and just to try to like uh, triage what happened. Yeah. And both of them said, you know, they really think that they did not eat enough during the day, particularly yeah, sure. starch. And if you do that, if you, do, if you think you're going to lose more weight just by eating fruits and vegetables and depriving yourself of the most important component of the hunger drive, the complex carbohydrate, you can end up overeating at night mm -hmm. trying to compensate for that. So we, this is a starch-based problem. Yeah, absolutely. You Even know, a lot though, of people think it's just vegetables. Yeah, no, they, they, they think uh, um, I'm the anti-McDougal because uh, McDougal doesn't say eat vegetables for breakfast. He doesn't say you can't. Well, we're dealing with yeah. a different No, we're, we're, this is a food addiction program, guys. Yeah. This is this is a whole different uh, can of beans, ball mm -hmm. of wax, if you will. So so the idea is I don't think there's anything wrong with people eating a piece of fruit at, at night. Uh, but but eat if you're hungry, you know, and that's There's hard. also nothing wrong with having vegetable at night. Absolutely. That, that's we're not going to get enough vegetables. No, that's true because, you know, that like sometimes where I'm at that like precipice of like maybe I didn't eat enough. Am I hungry? Am I not hungry? What I say to myself is am I hungry enough to eat vegetables? Yeah. And then I'll say to myself, yeah, and then maybe I'll go have a carrot or yeah. something. But then I'll say to myself, this is how I know if I'm really eating for reasons outside hunger. I say, am I hungry enough to eat celery? Because everybody knows <laughs> that's my like least. Celery. I don't like it. And I'm like, if I'm not hungry enough to eat celery, I'm right. not going to eat that carrot. So. Well, the other thing is if you put like, you know, I'm a big proponent of the veggie dome. Mm -hmm. and I'll go get you, it. Yeah. And it's on my site. If you want to see a picture of it, just livingwithharmony.org and shop resident recommendations. But it's basically a glass container that you fill up with vegetables and they last in there six days without turning wilting or anything. They shouldn't last six days because yeah. you should be eating them. But the idea is that it's on your counter, your table, wherever you want, in front of your TV, you always see it. Oh yeah, this is great. So you put your vegetables in here, you, you cut up cucumbers and peppers and mushrooms, whatever you want, and all you do is put the lid on and they, in this container it stays fresh for six days. You can't see it unless it's okay. like this. Here we go. I was looking, I was looking for my book. Obviously, AJ, this would be something she would eat in one meal. Yeah, this would, this would last me about six hours. And in, in, in both Not JP either. and I have a code if you want to get a discount on this. But it's yeah. very attractive. It's especially good, guys, if you have kids because you want to keep it out there so they see it. You know, kids will eat healthy food if you Absolutely. give them another choice. And especially if you cut it up for them. Love it. Love yeah. it. Two questions coming in from online. One, sure. Pam asks... JP, when do you have Power Roots? It's listed on your Living With Harmony. When do you recommend this product to be used? Well, Power Roots... Non-food addicted or what? Yeah, because it's uh, the Power Roots, like, um, that's, that's, a, that's really like a smoothie mix. So I use that for geriatrics, and I use it for kids, and I use it for athletes. Generally, people in UWL wouldn't use it, uh, but, you know, if, because it's, it's a drink. You know, it's a powder that you mix with. So for, if you have any senior citizens and you, you put in some almond milk, it's incredible. For kids, for them to get a massive amount of nutrients in, then of course my athletes use it all the time. Okay, two more questions here. One, one is, uh, is mastery only in LA? And the next question is, can we get more info about the food addiction program? Well, sure. Mastery is an online program that we run, uh, I think it's only been once a year since we yeah. started. We're trying to get to twice a year, but it's, it's online. The only prerequisite is that you're already in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program and at least know the principles. So the Food Addiction Program is the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. As I mentioned before, I wanted to call it the Food Addiction, Reverse, uh, the Food Addiction Reversal Treatment Program, but the acronym was FART, and I didn't like that. And he wanted to call it the Love and Compassion Program, so we compromised and we called it UWL, the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. Now, it is a wonderful program for weight loss, but really, at the end of the day, it's a health program that really specializes in people that suffer with food addiction. And when we deal with the food addiction, which is processed food addiction, sugar, flour, and alcohol, the weight, believe it or not, actually takes mm -hmm. care of itself. But Just like your atherosclerosis and high blood pressure mm -hmm. and, you know, un unstable mind. Well, I mean, it's Did it's, you see that video Nikki posted on our page? We got a gal, Nikki, man, I, I think she's got her, finally, she's got her own YouTube channel, oh. type 2 diabetic, on insulin, and she went and saw Dr. Steve Lewenda. If you live in the in Los Angeles area and you have Kaiser, best plant-based doctor you can ever go to.
pretty soon you're not even going to need insulin. It's amazing mm -hmm. what, what this way of eating yeah, does. Weight loss is just like one of the side effects right. of it. But that's what all girls that, want. Well, that's what sells, unfortunately, oh, yeah. which is fine. But yeah, because when we called it unprocessed, nobody came. Yeah. Same program, just a little bit lower yeah. fat. So yeah, that the food addiction program is the ultimate weight loss program. So we have people in the ultimate weight loss program that actually are not overweight, but oh, they sure. suffer from food addiction. A lot of athletes. Yeah. And then you have mastery on top of that. Mastery is a generally once a year, three month, very intense program with a small number of people. Small. Is that culture. just in LA or is that outside? Well, we run it virtually, so you can live anywhere. We have yeah. people in, in England. And, yeah. And, yeah. So. All, all the, everything we do via video and the phone. Yeah. Yeah. And so we do, we do like live streams and yep. webinar type things. So. Okay, so this is an interesting question. I would like you to go first on this one, and okay. the reason is, is there's a reason, if you okay. don't mind. And because, okay, so this is a lady in UWL. Maria wants to know the relationship between the physical change and the emotional change. I feel sometimes my slips are due to not making the emotional or psychological shift to health habit, as well as the physical change. What are your thoughts? Well, what do you, I, don't, I don't quite understand the question. Okay. Well, she's saying like she slips. I mean, I know. Yeah, what I know, does that mean, though? I don't know. Well, what I know means. in her case that um, she smokes and she's trying to not smoke. And when I so talk she, to that, she calls a slip. Well, if if it, or a, to me, a slip is like a relapse. I mean, I think of they're they're kind of a lapse. A slip is a relapse. Like, to me, like when I think of a relapse, it's usually longer term and it mm -hmm. keeps going. Whereas a lapse or like to me, a slip or a lapse is. Yeah. It's kind of like she drifts a little well, bit. I don't right. think smoking is a, is a is a you know that that's not just a little. Well, well, the thing is, is she's trying not to smoke, and maybe she has successful days or hours okay. where she doesn't smoke, and then she either maybe smokes or takes a drag off somebody's okay. cigarette. That I don't know if she means that with the food, see, because I, I advised her, what Dr. Lyle advised me to tell people, is that you don't do the Ultimate Weight Loss Program while you're smoking, you you or gotta, while you're drinking well, alcohol. Yeah, you deal with the bigger addiction first. Of course, first. Well, it's like being a heroin addict, and yeah. they come into UWL. It's yeah. like, deal with the main thing first. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's too hard because you yeah. only have a certain amount of willpower before exactly. it gets depleted. And if you're trying to follow this austere diet style while you're still, you're not going to have enough reserves to do it. But, but see, my, the way I would answer this question is that I don't feel it's because of the physical change or emotional change. I feel it's because of her environment. She lives with a man that smokes. Mm -hmm. How are you ever going to stop smoking when even if you have him smoke outside, he's going to smell like smoke. You know that every time he goes outside, he's going to be smoking. You, uh, from what I understand, she has coworkers that smoke. So to me, it's the environment that causes the slip, not, not the not committing to the emotional change. You know, I, I took a course, a college course in the addictive brain, and they said with people quitting smoking, like, you know how sometimes, like, if you go to Las Vegas, like, they'll sell an ashtray, like a decorative ashtray mm -hmm. with the name of the hotel. Like, it, it, sometimes people that don't smoke will buy this just as a souvenir. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people buy these decorative ashtrays, like, to put their coins in, mm -hmm. uh, change their pocket. Somebody trying to quit smoking, that is enough of a visual cue to cause cravings for nicotine. Sure. Just somebody that uses a lighter or matches to light a fragrant candle in mm -hmm. their house is enough of a cue. So I think that the problem is the environment. That's what I think. It almost always is, you know? Well, I mean, it's it's a major addiction, so you have to deal know? with that before anything else. Yeah. So her, she seem, feels her slips are due to not making emotional or psychological shift to health habits. I'm not I'm not really sure. I don't sure really what understand that means. what she yeah. what she means. Right. It. Yeah, maybe you, she's she's in the group, so maybe she could clarify mm -hmm. that. But my answer is always gonna be the same. What's her name again? Her name's Maria. Okay. And she lives in Spain and she's coming to the Vegas conference. Oh, wow. So that's gonna be cool. Spain's not too far away, is it? No, not too far at all. When yeah. people say, Oh my god, people say, Oh, it's so expensive to fly from you know, they all have different budgets, but still, yeah, Spain's but, a big deal. Yeah, no, I, we appreciate that, and I told her I want to see her smoke-free. I think they that. smoke a lot there. Well, I think in Europe they do smoke a lot, Asia too. Yeah, it's, it's more socially acceptable. You don't get ostracized, I think, in Europe as much as you do, in, at least in California. You wanted to see her there, though, huh? In Vegas? Want, yeah. Absolutely, I want to see her smoke-free. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Want that. Yeah. So, uh, do you think exercise is the same, though? So, like, do you think that... She should, because I see she posts pictures of herself working out. That uh -huh. would be a good thing to do while you're sure. quitting smoking, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because it yeah. gives you willpower. It gives you increases your. I willpower. think the best thing that you could do to quit smoking is to love yourself. In other words, stop taking the hammer and hitting yourself every day with uh, in the head with the hammer. People who love themselves don't do that. So the reason I wanted to call the program the ultimate, you know, love and compassion program is because the core of this entire program is love and compassion. So when you learn to start loving yourself enough, you don't do things that harm yourself. 
So that's why you want to start working on those. Yeah. yeah, that's why going to a therapist and getting therapy and doing some introspection to figure out, you know, what's going on between your ears here. You know, that that's going to help. Do you, you think hypnotherapy is good for smoking? What yeah. have you used in the past? Because I know you've had clients that oh, smoke yeah. and you've put in pictures. Yeah. Like, tell tell some of the techniques maybe that'll help her or other people that smoke. Because we'd really uh, love for you to not. I smoke. can remember I had one. Guy, I was I was part of this organization for um, kind of high rollers that you know very wealthy people and they kind of just gifted me into the program and it was very expensive. And they had me work with a guy who was saying alcoholic, he wasn't an alcoholic. And I said to him, so when do you drink? He said, well, after I'm, I'm, I go to work and then when I'm done, I go straight to a bar or tavern. I said, fine, I said, I'm not gonna stop you from doing that, but what I am gonna do is I don't want you to take any money and no credit cards with you, you leave it at home. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, you can be done with work, but then you're gonna drive home, see your family and kids, get your wallet and credit cards, your money and credit cards, and then go to the tavern. That was one of the things that stopped him because it interrupted a pattern. Mm -hmm. The other thing is um, have them take a, somebody who's a smoker, they take a picture of their loved ones and they put inside that carton, that little the, pack that of little cigarettes. That little thing between the, the plastic yeah. and the thing. So you're doing things that interrupt that habit and pattern. All these little things add up to something. But the ultimate thing where we can end it in a second is when you do that introspection and you learn to love yourself enough, you look at it and you'll say, oh my God, I wouldn't give cigarettes to my child. Why would I give cigarettes to myself? Well, the other thing is, is this I never understood, is somebody that's an ethical vegan, which she says she is. I mean, I, I remember in, in college, I had a, a, it was terrible in my uh, physiology class, the teacher actually, his job was at a beagle lab, and they test mm. these death sticks on these poor yeah. defenseless creatures. And so how can you be an ethical vegan and then yeah. be they, they, perpetuating they're test, that? They actually put the masks right onto the beagles and yeah. force them to breathe in inhalation therapy. They do it on mice too it's terrible. and rats. Um, yeah, so yeah, every time that you support these tobacco companies, yep. these are the ones that, you're, that hire for the at, testing. With every drag you take, you're killing an animal. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, some people will, and I'm not going to mention the name, but there's some so-called natural tobacco. The funniest thing is that nobody knows is that natural tobacco company is owned by the major tobacco company. Of course, company. just like now yeah. a lot of the dairy companies are buying the non-dairy Oh yeah, company. absolutely. She's online and she says she'll be smoke-free, dairy-free, yeah. and potato full. Good, but ask her what she means about the emotional physical shift and maybe we can answer that. And remember guys, when you type, Kenny can only see the first two lines because this, wow. this broadcast is on an iPhone. You know, this reminds me of somebody. I have a friend whose mother is 10 years older than me. She's 67 years old. She has multiple sclerosis, and she's been bedridden for years. So she's basically an invalid. And so she recently was in the hospital with pneumonia. So, of course, they, you know, they took her by ambulance to the hospital because she can't walk. They treated her pneumonia, chest x-ray, you know, IV, supplemental oxygen, antibiotics, you know, all this stuff. And because um, she's got a really bad cough. And so she's home now and she's still coughing and coughing and so they're giving her more and more medicine, you know, like uh, the, what that's, the cough medicine with the codeine to mm -hmm. knock her out and more medicine to make the, the, the secretions looser and more and more and she still has the cough and she's doing all these heroic measures, even having supplemental oxygen, but the only thing she's not doing is stopping the smoke. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, it, it, if, if you got a nail in your finger, you know, you don't go to the doctor for antibiotics. Yeah. You take the nail out, right? It's a powerful addiction. Absolutely. I had it myself. Look, I, I feel you. I mean, I hope I'm not coming off judgmental. I smoked for six years when I was anorexic thinking it would help my weight. But, you know, it didn't. Because, honestly, Maria, if this was what was keeping you thin, you wouldn't be overweight. Yeah. I mean, so it doesn't work. Okay. Two questions about nuts. One from Vicky, one from Angie. And they're, they're a little bit similar but also different. Vicki says, I'm sure you have probably answered this question before, so feel free to respond here. When you reach goal weight, is it okay to add a few nuts and seeds, chia flax seeds, back in your diet? We'll take this one first. First of all, it was never not okay to have yeah. flax seeds and chia seeds. Nothing we to do with goal weight. Yeah, we totally recommend up to a tablespoon. Some people do a teaspoon. Some people do two te teaspoons of ground flax seed or chia seeds on their oatmeal or on their salad. So we've yep. never said you don't have to do that. We recommend when people are new to the program, see if you can go 21 or 30 days without any added fat, just to give your taste buds a, task, a chance to adjust. But we've never said that people have to withhold seeds. So when they say, is it okay to add a few? Well, first of all, I don't know what okay means and I don't know what a few is. Mm -hmm. We know, and especially now that we released that video last week with Dr. Rosanne Alviera about the skinny on fat. If you didn't get it, that's because you're not on my mailing list and you might want to do it, but it's on YouTube now. Uh, she's a geneticist that has done experiments with her uh, genetically identical twin sister who is heavier than her because she eats differently. Roseanne is a vegan. And how that a woman responds differently to fat than a man and a woman that's been overweight and lost weight is genetically different than one that hasn't. So you're welcome to experiment. But we know from Ultimate Weight Loss that even people that have added back 
a very reasonable amount of nuts or nuts and dried fruit have gained back 5% of their weight and it took them a really long time oh, yeah. to take it Especially off. Especially combining nuts and yeah, dried absolutely. fruit. Yeah, absolutely. That's a nightmare. Yeah. So I would say do it very cautiously. I would say, you know, maybe start with like one Brazil nut. But, mm -hmm. you know, we have people like Jane that say one Brazil nut, she gains weight. Well, yeah, I would, I would, if you want to have nuts, I would grind them. Mm -hmm. So that's less that hand mouth thing and you just sprinkle it in a salad or mix with brown rice yeah. or something. You know, the problem is, is because they're so delicious in their, that, that the mouth feel. I mean, if you could have a few nuts and not be overweight, do it. Yeah. But we found with our people, it tends, tends to be a gateway to... Next thing and you they know, all it's think they can. Yeah, they, they, next thing you know, it's peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah. I know I can't. I have not had any nuts in over six years. I eat tons of purslane. I've had my DHA, my e ALA, EPA, my ratios checked, and they're fine because I eat four to six pounds of vegetables a day. Nuts are healthful, but for our people, for food addicts, they can be very problematic. And we're, we're one of the only people that actually tell the truth about that because we're not thin male doctors that have never been overweight telling you you have to eat these people are finding that they can't eat them and meet goal weight or not have cravings. If you can do yeah. it, do it. Okay. Mr. Fitness Guru, we have a question from Brenda. She's 60 plus years old and she's wondering, she's lifting weights. She's wondering if there's something she should add to her diet to help because she's lifting weights. No, I mean, just as long as you're eating enough legumes, beans, peas, and lentils, getting spinach and broccoli, so you're getting enough of good amino acids to help build tissue. But it's just like your immune system. Your immune system is built by protein and your muscles are built by protein, but you only need a certain amount. You know, when you're a baby, you're growing the most when you're an infant. And that breast milk, depending on when it's expressed, could be six to eight percent protein. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a ton of protein, but just make sure you are getting those legumes. If you can handle legumes, pound the legumes. Some people can't handle legumes. Like me. Like you. So I do quinoa. So you do you do quinoa, amaranth, mm -hmm. you can use um, chlorella. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked yep. about that? Spinach and broccoli. If you can have nuts and seeds in, in, in moderation, those so are good So should she be doing beet boost, or is that just for cardio, uh, not, not for Yeah, weight the beet boost is, is mainly to cause vasodilation, kind of like a Viagra, and reduces inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not so much for, and depending, if she wants to have more energy, uh, depending, you know, that would be fine too. Okay. Yeah, beetboost.com, and then use the code JP16, JP and you get free shipping and 15% nice. off. Yeah, maybe we can get him to come to the Vegas conference oh, or, yeah. or give little yeah. packets to oh, everybody. Let's try idea. and ask him to come this year. We've got great vendors coming. You know that um, if you're if you're coming to Vegas, you get admitted to this private group for people that are going to help plan it. We're having Chef Terry from Beemon Paz Vinegar create the, a signature dressing just for the conference. Oh, wow. And Janine Elder, Elder, the graphic designer oh, yeah. from Potato Wisdom, creating a t-shirt and a tote just for the, the, the uh, conference. So make sure that if you did co, you are coming to the conference, you get in that private group and make sure to buy by 11.59 p.m. tonight and save uh, uh, $250. Do we, are we getting close to a limit? Is there a limit of people well, we can take? Well, there's a, a limit unless we go to a bigger ballroom. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll, well find out. We might out. as well get the discount. Well, why not? You know, discount. because the thing is, is even though um, it's non-refundable, you can always send somebody in your place and at the last minute, oh, I'm yeah. sure somebody will that's rather buy your ticket for $250 off. Yeah, you know, that's a good point because a lot of people, I remember, not a lot, but a handful a couple, of them yeah. couldn't make it. And, and some they of them sold them in instant. And so they sold them instantly and some have even donated that them to nice. people. Yes, very nice. Thank you, Lanny. Lanny, sold, Lanny gave somebody her ticket. Oh. Okay. So... Angie says, can you talk about when we become confident, cocky, and allow foods such as nuts and or dried fruit back in and then gain some of our weight back? What strategies can we use to avoid becoming completely derailed and just pick up and get right back on track? Well, that was one kind of just like the other person asked. Right. Uh, and, and so one of the experiences we've seen, I've seen people, we both have, who have been in UWL for a year, perfect, mm -hmm. like just poster perfect, mm -hmm. and then they start getting cocky. Mm -hmm. And I'll get the call. And they'll say, JP, it's been three months since I've gone off the program and I can't get back on because they went in a downward spiral. And that particular person, I believe it was, um, I think maybe they went into having like a pita bread or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a little handful of nuts or a little dried fruit. Decide you want to have some rice cakes or something like that with hummus or something. You make, you rationalize and you say, but I'm putting hummus on it. And then before you know, you can't get out of it. You yeah. got to have more and more. It's like an alcoholic. 
You just have to be 100% abstinent. Well, that's where abstinence is, is bliss. You know, you taught me very early on when I went on the cruise that when I'm in a situation where things could be uh, tempting, yeah. that instead of saying, well, you know what, I'm on a cruise, mm -hmm. to actually tighten the screws instead of loosening the screws. Yeah. So for me, while I was losing weight, I was having a little tahini. I wasn't having nuts because I knew they were a problem for me, but I was having a little tahini. I was having a little avocado. I was having a little flax seeds. But as I kept losing weight, I, I tightened the screws more and more. So now, I, it, it's, it's, those were the foods that made me fat in the first place. So why would I think that just because I'm slender now, I could eat them? Right. This is the problem we have with dieting. Whatever the diet style is, the reason 98% of the people gain the weight back within two years is because they feel like, okay, well, they lost weight now, so let's go back to doing what I'm doing. If you could have done what you've done to, to gain the weight, you wouldn't have gained the weight. Yep. And this is where there's something, I don't know what the principle is in psychology, but I, I guess people forget it or something, you know? Well, I mean, every you're, it's, it's, it's in your genes. You're drawn mm -hmm. to constantly right. do it. It's a battle that you have all day long. Should I have the sugar? Should I have the fat? Yeah. Should I rest? That's what your body's telling mm -hmm. you to do for survival. But you have, to out, you have to outsmart it, I guess, in so many words, and realize that, no, it's not going to be healthy in the long run for you. I mean, think of think of sugar and flour as you would any other substance abuse disorder. If you were an alcoholic, right. you wouldn't say, wow, this is great. You know, I've been sober yeah. 10 years. I'm yeah. going to go out and celebrate. have a drink and yeah. celebrate. No, 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 no. If you're an addict, if you're not an addict, then it's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. I mean, I can go eat whatever, have whatever any of that stuff, a smoothie, candy, ice cream, vegan ice cream, vegan donuts if I want it, have a bite. And then say, oh, okay, I'm not getting any more. But I don't think that's most of our people. Right. And what they're forgetting is that after a period of abstinence, whether brief or prolonged, these foods have a greater pull because they've oh, been yeah. away from it. So while you were eating crap every day, sugar and flour, you weren't really getting pleasure from it. You were just avoiding the detoxification withdrawal. You were getting, you know, maybe a three-minute hit of dopamine. But once, once you've been away from it, then you go back to it, then you get a real big hit of dopamine, like yeah. the first time you use yeah, it. Yeah. So it's actually more dangerous, I think, to relapse oh, yeah. when you're in recovery it and a goal weight than if you're on the path. Well, imagine what's going to happen to your self-esteem. Your yeah. self-esteem is going to go down because you're going to feel so bad that you went off the program. And then most people in this program have kind of a black or white thinking. Oh, I had a donut. I might as well have six. Mm -hmm. Now I had six. I gained a pound. I might as well have 12. I yeah. might as well just start next year. Yeah, it's just not a good attitude. Okay, That's good why people excited you said sex instead of sex. <laughs> so here's the secret, though. The, 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 the main benefit of UWL isn't so much AJ and I doing the videos and sending you all that stuff. That gets you in the door, but it's really the support of that community. Mm -hmm. That's worth its weight 10 yeah, times. Absolutely. 10 times. Well, you know, if you haven't joined, try to join by tonight because we're starting a 21-day challenge tomorrow called No Way Jose. Oh. Way being spelled W-E-I-G-H. Oh, yeah. You can refer to the videos I've done with Dr. Kerry Saunders about why the scale is absolutely useless for tracking your success in this uh, in this particular. Uh, I might have mentioned it too about 20 years yeah, ago, yeah. or maybe it was 25 years ago. Well, that's we're doing this in your honor. So, okay. All right, two more questions. Uh, one is from a UWL member for sure, Donna. I'm not sure about Trish, but because I know Donna. So Donna says she looks great. By the way, I saw her picture recently. Donna says I'm not a volume eater. And now that I'm closer to goal weight, I'm losing slower, as would be expected. Mm -hmm. I want to know how to balance eating enough and still losing. I'll let you answer. Because I'm, I'm a little it. concerned that she okay. knows what her weight is. Okay. Well, <laughs> what I'm gonna how I'm gonna answer this, the first way I'm gonna answer this is um, I don't believe that you're not a volume eater. I mean, unless you've had gastric bypass surgery where you absolutely cannot eat large volumes without serious repercussions. To me, when somebody tells me, Donna, I'm not a volume eater, what I'm hearing is I'm not willing to eat salad and vegetables, or at least in, a, in an amount great enough to have success. That's a good point. Yeah, because here's the thing. So Dr. Goldhammer, the most profound, I mean, he said so many things that just like are permanently emblazoned on my brain, but probably the, one of the most helpful things he ever said to me is show me an overweight person, and I will show you someone who is unwilling to eat enough raw salad and steamed mm -hmm. vegetables. That is the only food that really has volume. So I want to show you something. In this little uh, plastic container, I, was it yesterday or two days ago, I flew home from Florida and there's no direct flights. I was on two planes, like it took like 12 hours to get home. And these were the snacks that were given me on the airplane for the day. Now, if you, would you mind I thought this, this is what you keep next to your bed. No, no, I, I you know, it, 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 Charleston, why did you bring that crazy. crap home? I said, because I want to make a point. So these are the snacks that were given to me, and I didn't take the, um, I, I didn't take the, uh, the, the soda that was offered. But here's the snacks. 
these all fit in my hand, right? I mean, I have pretty small hands. Yeah. This right here is 1,400 calories and very high fat. Now, I need probably 1,900 calories a day for my weight about, depending on exercise. This is almost a day's worth of calories for me. This is a pretty small volume of food. This container holds two cups, right? Now, when I put two pounds of zucchini in my air fryer, like I do almost every day for breakfast, the yield is less than two cups. Mm. And the caloric, the caloric uh, expenditure is 134 calories for two cups of food from vegetables. And here we have 1,400 calories in, the, in my hands. Now, I could eat 350 calories a pound. I could eat four pounds of Morisaki or Japanese sweet potatoes, which I've never eaten Man, more than three pounds of potatoes in a day, for the same amount of calories. So when you tell me you're not a volume eater, unless you've had gastric bypass or gastric sleeve surgery, what you're telling me is you're unwilling to eat enough vegetables and salad to lose the weight that you say you want to lose, because that's the only thing that has volume. Look, legumes are great, but a, you know a can of beans is a, is a, is a, is um is almost 400 calories. Same amount, you know, and, and that's not that much volume. It's mm -hmm. one and that's a half cups. It's, that's me make hummus right. out of it. Exactly, you know, even fruit. But the only thing that really has volumes in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program are the vegetables, especially the raw vegetables at 100 calories a yeah. pound, the cooked at 200. So everybody's a volume eater. You're just kidding yourself. Because when you say you're not a volume eater, you're saying you're not willing to eat the volume of vegetables that it takes to be slim. And Go Dr. Goldhammer always says that if you're not at the weight you want to be, it's because you're not eating enough. You're not eating enough of the calorically dilute food that you need. I eat four pounds of non-starchy vegetables a day at a minimum, sometimes six. Watch episode 36. You are, you are a volume eater, but you just don't realize you are because you're eating foods of too high a caloric density. So It's amazing. Yeah, this is amazing. 1,400 calories of, of crap. And this is what people eat there and back on the plane? Oh, yeah. So this was wow. two flights. So, so each flight, wow. you know, crazy, huh? A lot right. of sodium too in there. Oh, really? Not a lot of fat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got one more. Oh, so what, what, you were going to answer this question based on another principle. Now that I'm getting closer to goal weight, I'm still losing. How to balance eating enough and still losing? Well, I mean, you, you're not change. You don't need to change anything. It just takes time. Yeah. You can. You can. If you wanted to, which I don't recommend, you can up your exercise, or you can also decrease your starches, which I don't recommend because when you decrease your starches. Uh, then you start getting more hungry and you're more likely to have a, uh, go into a relapse and create some sort of sugar. My suggestion is just go slow and steady. The weight will come off eventually. Absolutely. People yeah. don't realize because they see the end result that it took 27 months for me to lose 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we, I don't know if I ever told you this, but we started, when we started Ultimate Weight Loss, we started running it online. I think it was 2014 in the summer. But I had a consult with this gal. It was 7 o'clock on Wednesday night was the consult. And you know, I gave her the program, and she calls me Monday, uh, Friday morning, which is like about 36 hours later. She goes, remember. she goes, I want a refund. Yeah. I haven't lost any weight left. I mean, oh it, takes, it takes 35. It takes a, a deficit of at least 3,500 calories to lose one pound of body yeah. fat. And so, how would you know if you're losing a pound of body fat or not? Anyhow, well, you, you wouldn't. Mm. You wouldn't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like. So, trust in the program. So Donna, commit to eating enough vegetables during the No Way Jose challenge, and I bet you yep. you'll get down. And there. remember, the secret is if, if you have any question, the answer is. Vegetables. More vegetables. Kale. The other yeah. thing is, is people don't realize that even when you're not losing weight as measured by the scale, like Shada had a seven month plateau, but she was getting into size four pants, but the scale wasn't budging. And the other thing is Shada six years now, down 120 pounds. She recently had another weight loss drop. She wasn't trying to lose weight. Your body will release the weight right. when it's ready, as long as you're sticking to the food. It's the food, it's the food. Okay, last question. Trish, I don't think she's in UWL because I would remember that name. Maybe I would not. She says, Trish, at Trish, Trish, I want to say Trisket. Trish asks the following. I quit cigarettes in my late 20s, drinking alcohol in my late 30s, and finally coffee in my late 40s. Congratulations. They're all three things that are hard. As I approach my 50th birthday, I wonder why I can't have similar success with sugar and flour. You can. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the way I see it is because, this is what I think, is because sugar and flour are just every bit as drugs as coffee, tobacco, and alcohol. But I think the difference is, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, is that she, she, I don't think she started out from the time she came out of her mother's womb smoking cigarettes, drinking mm -hmm. alcohol, and drinking coffee. 
I know there's always these people that say, oh, my dad started smoking when he was eight, but most people that smoke don't start smoking till they're teenagers or college age, mm -hmm. which means you might have had 15, 18 years without tobacco. Most people don't start drinking alcohol till they get to college. Some start younger these days, and coffee, that varies from person to person. But the thing is with sugar and flour, because most people actually think of them as foods instead of the drugs they are, the mood-altering drugs they are, they've been consuming them from pretty much not only the time they were born, but before they were born. You know, I remember over 20 years ago, Dr. Logan was sharing some research with me about how what a mother eats when she's pregnant affects the oh, fetus. Yeah. And that they did these studies and then mothers that like had like cravings for pickles, for example, mm -hmm. the kid grew up loving pickles and mothers that kept eating vanilla ice cream, the kid grew up eating that. So, you know, we know now like from work like Dr. Furman's book and Dr. Stoll said this, uh, I'm talking about disease proof your child and fast food genocide, but Dr. Stoll said this at the conference is that what we eat affects our grandchildren's mm -hmm. genetics. And so the thing is, is you didn't have as much of exposure to caffeine, tobacco, and alcohol as you did sugar and flour. If you weren't breastfed, for example, baby formula has sugar, fat, and salt in it. It's got corn syrup in it. And so the thing is, is you have been using those substances longer. So of course, if somebody, you know, thank God I only smoked six years, I mean, it still was hard to quit, but I'm sure it was easier for me to quit than somebody that's been smoking for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're almost 50, Trish, you've been using the drug of sugar and flour for 50 years. Sugar and flour aren't foods. They're chemicals we add to the food, like salt and oil that fool the brain satiety mechanism. They're not found in nature. They are they go through the same refining process as drugs and alcohol, so that's what I would say. Well, what you're do also you say? genetically wired to have that flour and salt and sugar. You're not oh. genetically wired to have tobacco and alcohol. So it's a stronger drive to have those processed foods because those foods keep you alive. But and and, and also, you know, no, but I'm, I'm holding up Bailey because she was groomed today. Doesn't um, Bailey will be in Vegas, actually. Of course. She'll be part of the carnival. So the other thing is, is, is that nobody has to smoke cigarettes. No. Nobody has to drink alcohol. And nobody, what was the, nobody, and what was the third one? Caffeine. Uh, drink coffee. Nobody mm -hmm. has to have caffeine. But you have to eat. And that's why this addiction, a food addiction, is harder. It's like, uh, was it you or Dr. Goldhammer said that it'd be easier to cure yourself of stage four cancer than overcome food addiction or lose yeah, weight? He, he said that a lot of times. And so the thing is, is we have to stop thinking of sugar and flour as foods. And the thing is, is they're not only not foods by themselves. Most people don't just eat granulated mm -hmm. sugar or, or flour. They're in things like candies, cakes, cookies, pies, and ice cream. They're ingredients in things that we consider food. We have to look at them as the drugs they are, and then maybe that might help you. And I don't think you're an ultimate weight loss trip, Trish, but consider joining and join by tonight so you can join us for the next challenge in the month of February. Any other questions or we'll say goodbye? Questions are gone, but we got a couple things. So we want to say where to go to buy their tickets online. Yeah, you want to go to my website, eatunprocessed.com. If you get there before midnight, you'll save $250. Get the meet and greet for free. Dr. Neil Barnard has confirmed he is coming to the meet and greet. Ooh. And that's Pacific Standard Time. Yes, Pacific Standard Time. And next, we have a challenge starting tomorrow. Where do we go for that? We go to the Ultimate Weight Loss main page, not the Mastery or the Vegas page, which you need to be in Ultimate Weight Loss to participate. And you can find out more about that on my website at eatunprocessed.com. By the way, if you haven't checked out my previous book on process, check it out. It comes on Kindle. And JP, a lot of people don't know, have two amazing books. One is called The Pillars of Health. Maybe next week we'll show them. And one is called Strong Savvy Safe, which is a, really a woman's empowerment book. And where is JP's uh, website? Oh, livingwithharmony.org. And that has all my, inf all the products that I personally use are on that site. So just click on resident recommendations. Hey, Kenny, can you throw those, since they're standing there, that pair of shorts, the Scooby-Doo shorts to JP? JP, would you hold these shorts oh, sure. up? I just, because I'm holding Bailey. I, I, you know, I know, you, th th this, that's what I used to wear. Those were my shorts. Amazing. So, yeah, and, and so... This program works, guys, if yeah. you do it. So thanks so much for watching another episode, episode 61 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, along with my partner, John Pierre. We believe you can have both the health and the body you so richly deserve. Now, go sign up for Vegas. Thanks, y'all. That's a wrap of episode 61.